Well, hello everybody, Bug Eater 64 here. And as you can see, today I'm going to do a little test flight. I'm going to be doing a flight in the recently released from Wing 42, the Boeing B 247 Delta. This was the first ever specifically designed modern, let's say modern. <laughs> <laughs> aircraft uh, built specifically for uh, airline use and commercial passengers so this is what we're going to do is took its first flight in 1933 and uh, she's just a great old bird radial engines and so on uh, you know and what we can do is once we get into it, and like I said, it's going to be a, just a little test flight. We're going to take off, do a circuit around, and land back at uh, in South Carolina at uh, Greenville Spartanburg International, KGSP. And uh, just a great old fun little flight here. And I hope you enjoy it. So let's get inside the cockpit and we'll get started flying this old bird. And y'all know how much I love old radial aircraft. Uh, they're just, they're like me. They're old and they're beautiful. So let's get to it. See you inside the aircraft. Okay, so here we are. And uh, we're going to get things ready to go here. We're at GSP. Let's look at Now, this aircraft doesn't have any autopilot, so you have to hand fly the whole time. It doesn't have any real, any modernized navigational system, other than the fact that it's got the old radio navigation, where basically you follow a, a signal set out by Morse code uh to keep you going in the right direction and that's the morse code the radio unit is on the above bulkhead so we're going to go ahead and see about getting this thing started see if i can start it this is my first ever attempt to fly this airplane so we'll get things going here look at our clipboard now you can do the engine startup manually, uh, but for today I'm going to get a little help from my mechanic. So we've got uh, pilot, co-pilot, and our third member air crew. We're going to put some fuel in it. And you can control all that. You see the brown on the engines? That's oil. Then you can put in your passengers, how many you want to carry. And you can also add in, uh, in the front cargo area, it's primarily like for mail bags and so on. And then in the back, uh, we will add our luggage and other cargoes. So we'll make it so. And then you saw my air crew there. We're going to step outside and watch some of this going on which is really kind of cool. You see all the stands come in there. Uh, and in the front, you'll actually uh, see them loading the mail bags. That's our passenger entrance. And we'll see the ladders there and the starter crank. And you can do that all manually, but you have to bounce back and forth between in the cockpit and out cranking this thing. And for me, it was this first time I was going to go ahead and let my mechanic, my flight engineer, go ahead and do that for me. And we'll, you'll see that here shortly and it shows you what the air crew is doing at this point 
he's loading, getting ready to load the baggage. And you'll actually see the baggage disappear from the hand cart, the push cart, and it'll be added inside the plane itself. This is just, you know, a, one of the nice little uh, detail points of this particular module that is just totally cool. They did some very nice work on this airplane, and the price point, you can't beat it. I mean, it's $20. For this detailed an aircraft, that's pretty, pretty good. Okay. All right, so we've got the wheel chuck still in place. We'll take it. And let's see. We got the ladder in place. So. Okay, so we've got. The props, uh, we got mixture set to full rich. Now we're going to pump this to keep old fuel pressure up so we can get the engine started. And once you see wind up flywheel, see the mesh flywheel, we click that. And we must have done a good enough job because the engine started. If you don't do things quite right, that engine will not keep running. Like I said, this is just a short flight, uh, so I'm not going through the whole checklist, which there isn't one. At least I haven't found one. So here we're going to prime the right engine. And with the temperature we have outside, we use about four four or five pulls of the pump we'll get the fuel pressure up about four to five and then we keep pumping it while he cranks that engine So we've got two good engines. All right. And so we want to keep an eye on this manifold pressure. So we got the landing lights on. These old radial engines sound pretty cool. So we're heading down to runway four. We 
we've had a lot of rain and thunderstorms and so on the last few days here in upstate South Carolina and so we still got a lot of clouds because there was another storm front coming through but we're just like I said we're going to do a little circuit around Greenville Spartanburg come in to land Watch our oil pressure. Manifold pressures. These are our fuel tanks. Landing lights are on. This aircraft also was never equipped with flaps, so it's really have to watch on your airspeed on landing, make sure you got plenty of runway, and so on. The other thing is, is when you bring the landing gear down, it will drop speed very, very quickly. There is a lot of drag on this landing gear. All right, so everything's looking good. I think we're about ready to go. Ease the throttle up. And try to keep her on the runway. Here, yeah, our airspeed is alive, and we're slowly gaining airspeed. And there is nothing quiet about this old girl. Nothing quiet at all. You're coming up. Cruising speed on this aircraft is listed uh, between 180 and 185. Maximum speed right around 200. Climb rate is recommended to right around 1,000 to 1,200 feet a minute. Yeah, we're not going very high because we're just doing 
be making a turn here to the left. Now, I haven't touched the trim on this aircraft, and that's one thing. If I was going to make a longer flight, I would definitely be working the trim. Uh, and to do that, there's actually three handles on this. Uh, one for your elevator, your ailerons, and, uh, and your rudder, of course. So uh, this one... You've got this handle here, and then there's one down at your feet on the left, and one right behind the pedestal where you've got your fuel uh, throttles and other flight necessary gear for propeller pitch and fuel mixture. <clears throat> The, with today just being a short little flight around the neighborhood, we're just going to go ahead and not touch those things. But on a longer flight, it'd be very important so that you could really trim her out, get to cruise altitude, and basically take your hands off the controls. And she'd pretty much, if you're going to have to fly this bird by hand, you want her trimmed. Right now, she's not doing too bad. And basically, this is just normal, neutral trim. The default settings. So. Once I get into this a little bit more, then we'll uh, look at doing some of the other things. <clears throat> now, navigation, like I said, there's no autopilot. You have to fly it by hand, and basically you've got the old-style radio system to basically follow from one beacon to the next. And I've never used that system. I know I'm old, but I'm not that old. And uh, But there's really good documentation with this aircraft, other than the fact that there's no checklist on how to start it up and that takes a little, I've watched uh, some videos on the old YouTube channel that were re very helpful and took some notes but uh, she's a pretty easy flying aircraft You can actually blow fuses and replace the fuses. Uh, this is the radio power. Up here is your radio beacon and radio system. So, uh, you know, I'd have to learn all that. This here is your de-ice. So a lot of things going on here. Seat belt, no smoking switches uh, is right behind the yoke and the light lighting for your gauges and stuff like that are these knobs up in here so
But she was the first aircraft certified for uh, strictly passenger operations. Let's see. Took her first flight in February, I think it was February 8th, 1933. The other thing you have to be careful of is you got to watch your engine temperatures, manifold pressure, and so on, because you can actually set one of these engines on fire. And then this over here is your firefighting or suppression system. These two buttons over here, that's your feathering. So, and this is all your lighting for nav and so on. Uh, that's over on the cockpit or co-pilot side. Okay, we got the runway lights in sight. And we'll head back over here. Fight the wind a little bit and see about getting this aircraft on the ground safely if we can. You're coming down. No flaps to deal with, so it's just... So for people that like old, old aircraft, I mean old radial flying birds, they should enjoy this. If you like hand flying, this is an aircraft that can be a lot of fun and really enjoyable. For those people that like to use their, you know, autopilots a lot, probably not so much because <laughs> there is none to worry about. But if you want a real challenge, uh, in navigation uh, and want to take the time to learn the radio navigation system the old beacon system uh, this would be a way to do it and have fun doing it so let me think about landing this aircraft a little bit to the left here the winds pushing so I'm going to be needing to crab in some Okay. Over the threshold. And we'll just ease her down. Alright. 
touchdown. So we're on the ground, safe. And I just realized I did that whole flight with my prop RPM at about half. Never did give it full. That's why it took longer to get up to speed. Why? Luckily, it was just a short flight. But we're down safely. We'll go ahead and taxi over here to a parking spot. Now, when you're on the ground and you want to taxi, she's not real great on the ground, but if you have know how to use differential braking, it helps a lot. It truly does. Otherwise, you've got to really plan ahead and uh, she will rudder turn but she does it very slowly so you just have to plan your movements and you know just press lightly on the pedal brakes and she will turn And as per normal, the AI ground traffic for the sim has a tendency of just running through my airplane. Here we use the rudder and a little differential braking, and she turns right where we want her. We got that truck out of the way. Okay, and we'll put the parking brake on, and we finished our little flight. <laughs> okay, there you got it. We did our little flight. Uh, everything went well. I mean, hey, that short of little circuit and so on, the weather wasn't the greatest, lots of wind. But at the same time, uh, just a very uh, nice flying aircraft. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you real soon in a different aircraft. And from Bug Eater 64 to all my sim friends and people that just like to watch flying. Uh, until next time, remember, safe flying.